It is essential that the question be asked in every national situation and with e within each society. If democracy is failing, why is this the case? Every effort needs to be made to help correct the situation, rather than referring dismissively to failed states. To my knowledge, democracy can fail anywhere, at any time, in any society, as it has in several well-known and well-documented situations in Europe, as recently as the last 50 years. For it is self-evident in Europe and across the globe that the existence of political parties and elections do not alone produce stable governments or competent leadership. Three concepts seem to me to be essential in creating, stabilizing and strengthening democracy around the world, including among the people of Africa and Asia with whom I have worked in the past. These concepts are meritocracy, pluralism, and civil society. Perhaps the greatest obstacle to pluralism and democracy, however, is the lacuna in the general education of the populations involved. A dramatic illustration is the uninformed speculation about conflict between the Muslim world and others. The clash, if there is a broad civilizational collision, is not of cultures, but of ignorance. Intellectual honesty and greater knowledge are essential if the current explosive situations are to be understood as inherited conflicts rather than being specific to the Muslim world. These conflicts are actually driven by ethnic and demographic difference, economic inequity, and unresolved political situations. The rejection of pluralism is pervasive across the globe and plays a significant role in breeding destructive conflicts. Examples are scattered across the world map in Asia, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Europe, in the Americas. No continent has been spared from the tragedies of death, of misery, and of the persecution of minorities. Are such high-risk situations predictable? If the answer is yes, then what can be done about them to preempt the risk that the rejection of pluralism will become the spark that sets human conflict aflame. Is the onus not on leadership in all parts of the world to build a knowledge base about such situations and consider strategies for preventing them? For I deeply believe that our collective conscience must accept that pluralism is no less important than human rights for ensuring peace, successful democracy, and a better quality of life. The Ismaili Imamat strives to ensure that people live in countries where threat to democracy is minimal and seeks to draw on the experience of established democracies which have a vibrant civil society, are sensitive to cultural difference, and are effective in improving the quality of life of their citizenry, citizenry. Canada is a prime example of such a country. It is for this reason that the Icon Development Network is establishing in Ottawa what is to be known as the Global Centre for Pluralism. This secular, non-denominational centre will engage in education and research and will also examine the experience of pluralism in practice drawing on Canadian expertise and working closely with governments, academia and civil society. The Centre will seek to foster enabling legislative and policy environments. We inhabit an overcrowded planet with shrinking resources, yet we share 
a common destiny. A weakness or pain in one corner has the tendency rather rapidly to transmit itself across the globe. Instability is infectious, but so is hope. It is for you, the leaders of today and tomorrow, to carry the torch of that hope and help to share the gift of pluralism. Thank you. When I thought of having such a be an ending to this conference and the beginning with Desmond Tutu, I thought this is what we need to hear. We need to hear from people who are deeply rooted in the reality of their time, by destiny, by birth, by choice, but whose center is ethical and whose center is basically about what makes us human and whose actions in the world are about what we can do as human beings to reach each other, to understand each other and all the different forms and, and fantasies and imaginations that we have created in order to make it possible for us to live. Then we have to get to the platform of living together. 